Macquarie Perch is an amazing, unique Australian freshwater fish, once historically extremely abundant in the southern part of the Murray-Darling Basin, in the slopes and uplands regions, it would have been the most abundant fish species in a lot of these systems. Highly regarded historically as an angling and freshwater table fish, and we've almost lost them. You know, we've only got a handful of populations left, and you know, some of those populations are going out backwards, and yeah, we're trying to do the best we can to maintain and increase their populations and bring back this amazing fish. So on the Winburndale Rivulet, we are recovering Macquarie perch, not just this weekend, but we've been doing it for four years. So this is a really special space in the landscape, and what we've discovered at this area in the central west of New South Wales is just the spot for them. There's the right sort of resources, there's the right kind of habitat, but they just need a bit of a helping hand in that they're competing with an exotic species. And this weekend we're working with a whole stack of recreational anglers to remove that pressure so we can create a little sanctuary for them. Well, the Macquarie perch originally were in these streams. This area was opened up in 1815 and the reports were the creeks and rivers were full of the Macquarie perch. They were the biggest number of fish around in every creek. Fast forward to 70 years ago, they were extinct in this area. This now population is the only population in the Macquarie catchment. So we're bringing the maca back to the catchment that they take their name from. The project to recover Macquarie perch is really important. It's really difficult to recover threatened species. Once they're listed under legislation, it's so hard to get them back to self-sustaining population. So in terms of making a recovery or making a comeback, efforts like this are vitally important for bringing species back to their spiritual home, for a cultural resource, and for them to be a part of the landscape where they've existed for millennia. So. In the last 200 years, we've managed to wreck a whole heap of things, including making it quite difficult for some of our threatened native fish to survive. So to be able to work on this particular project is vitally important for this species. Essentially what we're doing here as part of this project is, is removing trout from the Windmendale system so they don't compete with the Macquarie perch for food and potentially predate on them as well. So we're working really closely with some local recreational fishers and Ausfish and the Central Acclimatisation Society to catch trout and take them out of this system and relocate them. So we're using a combination of methods to catch the trout out of this system. So line fishing and angling, which has been a big part of the program. We're undertaking electrofishing or backpack electrofishing and we're also using fike nets and we've got a trap in the stream that will capture any trout that are moving up out of the dam to spawn in the stream. So we'll catch them prior to their spawning run and hopefully stop them breeding in this system. It started four years ago and the first two years the trout were only relocated when fisheries would come up for a trout out weekend. The last two years they've done the contract with the Ausfish and we try to get the spawn run trout that come up, interrupt that spawn run, capture those trout. The trout are put into this tanker here behind me and these trout are taken to Portland to the mill pond and they're put in that which is a public recreational fishery. Well, this is kind of a, a great project for Ausfish because we're really doing what we do best. We like to try to harness the power of recreational fishers to do you know, habitat restoration to bring back fisheries, to improve fisheries. And this is a classic case where we're gonna you know, try to reestablish Macquarie perch. Right now, they're a threatened species. You can't fish for them, but what we are doing here, we're hoping to kind of bring back the maca, try to restore a bunch of streams to where one day we will restore this fishery for this beautiful and iconic native fish. So what we're trying to do is uh, trying to basically swap one fish for another, a native fish for a non-native uh, trout. The brown trout's not native to these waters. We're not getting rid of the trout, we're actually moving them to another area. This area is a place where fish o's can't go. It's uh, you know, a water supply, um, so it's completely off limits to, to anglers. And so we're taking the brown trout from here and we're moving them to a place where anglers will be able to uh, enjoy that fishery. And then we're replacing those brown trout in this stream, this pretty pristine stream, with a native fish that's threatened, the Macquarie perch. So it's been quite a journey over the past four years. We've gone from pretty much ground zero with not a single Macquarie perch in this whole catchment. When scientists first described the species, they were described from the Macquarie catchment. And to not have a single one of these beautiful fish left in this area is 
quite a blow really in terms of threatened species management. So from day zero back four years ago, we've been reintroducing Macquarie perch as fingerlings and we've seen them grow up. So we're following their childhood through to maturity. So in year four, we're seeing adult fish that are on the brink of maturity and being capable of bringing their own offspring into the world. Our big dream is that we tip the balance in the favour of the Macquarie perch and the freshwater blackfish and then we hope even this spring that we'll get a self-recruiting population starting. They'll, they'll breed here in spring and there'll be no more stocking of the Macquarie perch, they'll just self-naturally recruit. So the program's been even more successful than we'd hoped and anticipated. You know, we thought that we would be able to reduce the trout numbers to a degree, but we've had a much greater impact on the population than we thought we would. So, you know, we've seen the numbers dramatically reduced to the point, you know, where when we first started this program, you know, trout numbers would outweigh native fish sometimes 100 to 1. And now we're starting to see the native fish outweigh the trout. The trout are still here and they'll always be here. We'll never be able to get rid of them from this system. But it's just really encouraging to see that, you know, in that short period of time, with a fair bit of effort, we've been able to reduce the numbers and, and see some real results. It's been amazing. I've seen a huge change just since last year. Last year, there were a ton of brown trout here and I saw a handful of natives. This year, it's mostly natives. It's incredible. River blackfish, a couple of macas, some small galaxias. So a majority native fish, and that's something you don't see anymore in the Murray-Darling Basin. You see mostly carp or mostly trout, mostly redfin. And in this stream, it's mostly natives again. And that's just been in the last couple of years from this effort, it's unbelievable. And it's really good today. I think we've got about 12 or 14 river blackfish out of the river. And I do know on previous electrofishing surveys that we've assisted with, there haven't been too many blackfish in the river. So, you know, it's really heartening to see that, you know, the river blackfish, which is a, again a vulnerable species, is uh, starting to do really well. So that's great. I think we're really fortunate to have this project serviced by some really passionate people who are inspired by our native fish and who have a genuine connection and a love for these native fish. For me, it's absolutely vital. We're the custodians of these fish and we're the protectors of their future. So to be able to come here and work along shoulder to shoulder with wreck anglers that care about these fish is a really special the other thing to note too, we, we can't do it without the support of the community and without the support of anglers. You know, there's only a handful of people that know enough about these species and we, we need these people to assist us do this. We can't do it on our own. So through this initiative, we were able to secure funding through the Recreational Fishing Trust to contract Ausfish to give us a hand to remove some monads and make sure that there's a space and a future for Macquarie Perch in the Macquarie Rivulet. And that's done through collaboration and it's done with shared objectives and it's done through hard work as well. Theoretically, it seems quite simple. You know, let's protect and recover a native species, but it takes persistence and it takes passion, it takes willpower, and it takes good governance to get fish back from the brink. And long term, you know, hopefully, the end game is that once again, you know, recreational fishers will be able to target Macquarie perch. You know, these historically were a highly regarded and highly prized angling and food fish, and people haven't had that opportunity for generations now. You know, that, that's a tragedy that, you know, there's people um, in these areas have grown up without, you know, the opportunity to see or catch Macquarie perch. And, um, you know, this program is about potentially providing that opportunity back to the community and back to future generations as well.